On today's episode of Watch Jericho, if you've had your catalytic converter stolen, you know someone who does, or like us, you got hit. Today is all good news. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jerigo and today I'm out here at my dad's shop and the catalytic converter thieves have gotten us too. So obviously it's a nationwide epidemic. The catalytic converter thieves are running around getting under any car they can, especially the high value ones. You guys probably know what they are. They're actually listed in the article I'm gonna link below. It's like Prius, Tundra, uh, most of the Audi cats, uh, late model GM cats. They're incredibly valuable. And the thieves, if you have one of those cars, roll underneath with the sawzall, cut the cat off, and go sell it. And the problem is, it's really easy for the thieves to sell the stolen cats. Because obviously, cats do need to be recycled. Tons of cars get recycled daily, and the cats always get cut off. Picture an operation like LKQ, pick your part. Or really, every salvage art out there, they're all cutting the cats off cars when they intake them, and then they immediately sell those, because just selling the cats basically recovers the cost of the car. It's the best way to scrap them. You know, pull all the fluids, pull the cats, pull the batteries, and throw everything else out in a yard for people to pick through it. Well, those are legitimate sales, and those do need to take place, and thousands and thousands of them do take place every day. But it's also very easy for the thieves to uh, sell their stolen cats. Now, the reputable cat buyers require a VIN number, a copy of your license, possibly the registration for the car, before they will let you uh, sell them a cat and they'll pay you for it. But on the other side of the law, there were plenty of places that would take those stolen cats. And that is how the thieves ended up hitting four of the vehicles here at the shop and stealing the cats out of all of those. They even hit this one specifically, and it's actually so old, it doesn't actually have a cat. You can see there's what clearly looks like a cat in there, and it's just a hollowed out test pipe. So that just got welded back into place just so this thing could be started up and driven again. This Dodge was almost a bit of karma for those cat thieves. They cut it out, looked inside it, found out it was hollow, and then threw the cat back in the bed of the truck and ran away. So hey, at least it slowed them down a little bit. These thefts cost consumers hundreds and thousands of dollars every single year, hardworking people, and they come out to their car, start it up, and find out that, you know, it's insanely loud, the check engine light's on, the thing doesn't run right, and you have to deal with the smell of the gasoline. Of course, their car is immediately upset when the ECU doesn't detect a change between the upstream and the downstream O2 sensors, the catalyst is supposed to be there to uh, reduce emissions and catch all the unburnt fuel and burn it off. People have gone to great lengths to try to stop this theft, including welding rebar cages up under their car that go around the cat uh, just to slow them down. Or, there, of course, for the Prius, there are pre-built like steel solutions for you to bolt on to cover your cat. There are so many ways people have come up with to uh, protect the catalytic converter under their car because replacing it is a nightmare. And honestly, the aftermarket ones are probably a lower quality than the factory one as well. It'll probably have less precious metal in it. So these thefts are of course destroying a lot of families that don't have the money to replace their cat after it's gone. And you'll see businesses where their whole fleet gets hit and they'll pull up to the shop with 20 trucks and be like, we gotta replace all of these. Luckily, insurance ends up covering that insanity for them but for a lot of people, they just have to pay for it. And it's, you know, a huge inconvenience. But the federal government came through in a big way today, arresting over 21 people in five different states. Before I say anything else, I gotta throw this disclaimer in there. It's the same one the DOJ used. An indictment is merely an allegation. All defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. I'm not saying anything about any of these people. I'm just reading the article. So I was super excited to read this when this news dropped this morning. And I know you guys will be excited as well, but this is straight from the Justice Department. And basically the FBI, the IRS, and a whole bunch of federal agencies got together, arrested those 21 defendants and 32 search warrants were executed. They seized millions in assets, homes, bank accounts, cash, and luxury vehicles. They're seeking $545 million in civil forfeiture. I've chased down a lot of articles from other news agencies today about the local arrests. And of course, there were a ton in Oklahoma, a ton in California. And one of those places was DG Audio in New Jersey. It looks like they arrested mostly everyone that worked there. This is insane. They were taking semi loads, three semi loads of converters out of Curtis converters in Oklahoma. They are just going hard, just arresting everybody, searching everybody, taking everything they can get their hands on. And honestly, my hope here is that this 
kind of takes away the thieves' avenue to sell the converters. These aren't the thieves, even according to the indictment here, these are the people that are buying stolen converters, even though they know they're stolen. The amount of cats stolen in the US each year must be staggering. Uh, it says 1,600 a month are stolen in California, 2,000 last year just in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is unbelievable. If you figure every major city in the US has thousands stolen per month, like, it's crazy, hundreds of thousands of cats stolen. They arrested three people in Southern California for operating in an unlicensed business from their personal residence where they were buying the stolen cats. Um, shipped it all to DG Auto in New Jersey. 38 million worth of stolen converters. So that shuts down obviously a major avenue right there. And of course, DG Auto is taking cats from a whole bunch of different places. And it looks like the feds went to them first and then followed the money and went back to arrest everybody that was selling them a lot of cats, which is just... <sighs> it also says DG Auto sold all of the precious metals after they decanned them and stripped the metals out of the cats for $545 million. It's insane. It's just the numbers are staggering in this. Uh, and of course there's an Oklahoma case that's massive, a 40 count indictment charge. And they got so many people picked up in that one. Uh, Tyler Curtis received 13 million in funds from DG Auto. That's the Curtis Converters Company. I was looking at that earlier. Another half a million from Capital Cores. Adam Sharkey received 45 million in wires from DG Auto. <laughs> just insane, the amount of money. And then anyway, the rest of this article is just this huge thank you to all of the officers that participated in it. But there you go. That's uh, probably some good news for everybody in the automotive world today. They knocked out one of the biggest catalytic converter rings in the US. So there you have it, some good news. I think everybody will be happy to hear that you probably can go to sleep without worrying about your cat being stolen tonight. At least uh, if the thieves do take them, they've got nowhere to sell them for a long time. And you won't have to crawl under your car and weld up any weird rebar cages for your cat. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchchair.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. Water pump's leaking. Oh, okay. Water pump's puking. Yep. I, see, I see wet antifreeze right there. I want this oil leak stopped. Obviously, uh, there's see there's a whole bunch of oil. Does it have an integrated oil cooler? Is yeah, it? just a car radiator. Okay. This is a Chevy, Chevy, uh, an old Chevy two engine. Iron Chevy, Duke. Chevette, yeah, it's an Iron Duke. Got H E I. So, anyways, I want to uh, I want to get the radiator out and get it get it overhauled. Well, there's no cat, so there's nothing for anyone to steal. Yeah. <laughs> True. We're back in the shop for a quick update on the new Cushman. It's a 1964, I think, Cushman Silver Eagle. Yep. Um, it has uh, 4,800 miles on it. I can't imagine riding a nine horsepower yeah, down the road insane for- that's uh, an insane amount. That's a nine horsepower single. Don't, they mostly have like a couple hundred miles on them. <laughs> well, yeah, they, there's some of them that get, Ridden. this one's obviously had a lot of miles put on it. But yeah. anyways, I bought this thing and it was uh, kind of a, it looked good, but it turned out to be kind of a little disaster. Um, this is the top off the transmission. Now, did you just repaint it? Or yeah. just, okay, okay. Yeah. It's all, we're all new? No. Uh, what happened was this goes right here. Sure. Goes right here on top of the transmission, just like that. I got to put it back on there, but I got to put a new seal on right here. Uh -huh. But this, this controls your ride height through a, uh, what well, comes back to here. You see where the lever attaches? Gotcha. So this goes right here and there's a rod that goes from here to here and it controls the ride height. Well, this was busted clean off right there. Oh, okay. So I called Ed's Cushman and uh, Ed said, yeah, I got that piece. So he sends me this piece. And uh, then we just welded it back on. I sandblasted it and gave it a, that's factory, factory Cushman color, so I'm told. Okay. At least that's what they sold me. And um, so I got that. So this is ready to go back on. Just needs a lubricant and, and a seal. This is your shifter. <coughs> That's your gear shift. Okay. Yeah, here's the. Ah, that this makes is, sense. This comes that from the gas tank back to here. That makes sense. And uh, so once that's put on, I just got this on here to keep it clean so no dirt. And then a centrifugal <coughs> clutch, right? Yeah, well, it's it's actually, this, this is a, uh, a centrifugal up here. This is your... Uh, this is your manual clutch. So when you step on the floorboard clutch right there, it pulls this rod oh, in. Oh, I see. It pushes and it and... So you can depress the clutch and actually uh, get to neutral. Yeah. And shift gears. Here's when you the, push on that pedal there. That's right. Okay. There's, there are brakes over here, clutches over there. Here's your point set. 
right under there and of course they were dirty I cleaned them I, I haven't I haven't ran it yet other than to kind of do like the tractor yeah. I cleaned the points sprayed gasoline right into the carburetor mm -hmm. and then I kept kicking it and then there was all kinds of things broken on it um, it had a pretty pretty rough life so besides besides that being broke uh, the bearings were completely bad here in the hub in the I've already it's just all bolted back on so oh, that's right so that's bolted go. on this that's the I, I painted that I sandblasted it and painted it and it had it had marks all over it it been treated kind of I think a chain come off probably and did that damage. oh it looks like that yeah bought a new chain so there's there's new chain uh, new uh, new bearings so I've already got the races tapped in I just need to pack the bearings and put in this this I had a devil that's the dipstick for the transmission ah. I had a devil of a time getting that out of there because it was I think it was locked tight it in ah. it would not come out looks but, like the threads in the middle got a little well, I, I finally got it out of there. I gave it a paint job, so it gave it a little DuPont overhaul for it. So uh, I just gotta, I gotta put that back in. So it's ready now to be, just to be reassembled. Here's the brakes. Of course, the brakes look really good. Yeah, the brakes look new. And uh, I, I bought the Cushman shop man. Oh, here's the carburetor. So this carburetor was a disaster. Um, you could, not, nothing would turn. You, okay. you couldn't get anything to turn. This, this was locked up everything was totally locked so again the secret to all this restoration is just be patient yeah and uh, be patient go slow so what I did was I just started soaking things up with uh, with penetrant and then you know you can soak on them and then like my uncle who was Mace Archer who was a jeweler in uh, Winfield Kansas uh, you know and my dad too you know my my uncle had a little miniature uh, Min miniature hammer you know and you just take and you just be gentle and just start tapping on them until things start moving mm -hmm. and as long as you don't get too carried away you can save this stuff so by judiciously uh, working on it you can see it works great yeah right yeah, so terrible. yeah so it's got a new float uh, a, new, a new needle and seat in it that same float new needle and seat new uh, new gaskets and uh, here's the here's the gaskets to install to go, to go on the front so so that's ready to go back on so basically everything is here now to uh, put this together so we'll be starting this up I uh, got new seat. There's that Cushman paint. I saw that custom paint. Yeah. Guess somebody's mixing that up for them. The, there's the old seals. The seals were actually uh, uh, that's felt. Oh, okay. They're, you know, this is 1964. Sure. So it's felt seals. I got I got uh, these. Nice I just new. I just looked up the number, the yeah. number on that seal, and here's the modern with a spring. Yeah, oh. the modern uh, 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 single lip uh, seal to replace it. So that's ready to go. So I'm gonna put some bearing grease and brake grease. On these various components, there's the rear axle cleaned up. I want to shoot a coat of, paint. I want to shoot a little bit of paint on there to so some rust prevent preventative. So it needs a little bit of paint. A little, you can see this. It, it, this was all locked up. None of this stuff moved. What's, uh, it, what's that I, go to? This is your brake. Oh, okay. This, none, none of this stuff was moving. It, nice. Every everything I touched on it was locked. This thing has been sitting out in the rain, and uh, just just by being patient. Hammering away, tapping and soaking, it it finally came loose. So once once I get the transmission back together, the there's the rear seat, and uh, that's the that's the oh, that's see. the rear seat and the and rear the fender goes on. Work. Yeah, and then here's the here's I can't, the tail light. Can't believe this thing even has two seats. Yeah, I can't either. I I just can't imagine riding <laughs> it very far. But it's not the Silver Eagle. It's not far. Yeah. It just it, in a few hours we'll have this back together. And uh, the one thing I did want to do, the, this, the spring was broke on the, on the Kickstarter. That was, that was all broke, so I bought new spring. Um, here's the, the Kickstarter. The whole Kickstarter looked like that, you know. Uh, this was locked up. You couldn't, you yeah. know, it's just from years of sitting out in the rain. See it? That's ready to go. I just sought that one. I sandblasted it. Oops, I need to put a little more paint right there. Just put a little paint on this little dry tonight. Trying to get stuff painted, so. It's ready to go together. Yeah, so all I got to do is start assembling it. I don't, I'm hoping that I got everything to to put it to put it together. So it's just, you know, everybody says these Cushmans are worth a lot of money. Well, I I, I tell you what, I I paid some for it, but you know, I spent a thousand dollars on parts and I haven't even ridden it yet. <laughs> is this the headlight switch? I don't know. It's some kind of switch. <laughs> oh, it's an OMC engine. Yeah, this, you know, uh, Outboard Motor, who's making yeah. Long Boys and Johnson Johnson Outboards. They got their own boat motor on here. Yeah, they, they, they bought Cushman, and uh, they got rid of the old cast iron Husky engine, and, and this was a big improvement. 
That's a split case. Yeah. It splits right on the crankshaft like a lawn boy. Uh, from what I understand, it's a it's a really good good engine. But uh, of course, uh, about the time these things were, you know, in '64 and '65, the uh, Hondas and the Suzukis and the Yamahas were all hitting the market with their little singles, and big tires. Yeah. More power, lighter weight. Oh yeah. They just they, these guys just exited the business. So yeah. you know they exited the two wheelers and went to strictly threes and fours. Sure. So. Anyways, that's the update on that one. We'll, we'll, we'll have to make a, uh, an update when that thing's on the road. Soon. Yeah. You can't buy the tires. Oh. That's one thing. Oh, okay. That, well, that but, tire looks new. That, it's not. Oh, it's a coker. It's a coker, but it's not new. That's a, that's a 3.75 by 9.75. You know, they didn't oh. put a 4 by 10. Yeah. They put a 3.75 by 9.75. You can't buy it. Huh. You can't buy the tire, so it's a tubeless tire, and it was flat, and it wouldn't hold air. So I bought a tube, a four by ten tube. Oh, and just threw it. <clears throat> I tubed it. Now the front tire is tubeless, and I aired it up, and believe it or not, it holds. Huh. So I'm, I'm until it shreds the tires. I mean, these tires are probably 20 years old or 30 years old. Who knows when the last time it was ridden? They still look good though. Yeah. So I'm hoping if I can get a few miles out of it, maybe by the time I get done, you know, the tire comes apart, they'll be making the tires again. <laughs> so.